Welcome back. Today, uh, we're going to look at more X-Men. We're going to take a look at uh, Powers of X number two today on Comic Book News. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. Hey, we're in the Danger Room Control Center today, and we're going to take a look at more Powers of X, number two. There's House of X, there's Powers of X. Or is it Powers of Ten? Well, uh, as we'll see, you don't have to be great at math to know this book, but it might help a little bit. So let's go to the Million Dollar Comics cam and see what we're getting into. So Powers of X uh, ostensibly is all about the past, present, and future of the X-Men. Um, but which X-Men? That's really the question. So um, in this book, um, as we talked about in issue number one, we deal with uh, what they call X-Zero, the original formation and foundation of the X-Men. Uh, we talk about uh, X-1, which is 10 years in. That's sort of current day continuity. We've got X-2, which is uh, 100 years into the future, closer to the sort of days of future past stuff we might have seen before maybe. Um, a little after that. Uh, and then uh, we go a thousand years into the future, into the far future. Now I'll admit, um, some of this stuff is confusing. And to make it even more confusing, we're not really sure which timeline we're even looking at. Remember, uh, from last time in our uh, timeline review, we looked at the many lives of Moira X. And we looked at... Well, we looked at uh, this timeline, which shows nine out of the ten lives she has supposedly lived so far. So um, we got little tantalizing clues into what might be going on, uh, but we don't know exactly when we're talking about year, when they're jumping back in time, are we talking about in this timeline, this one, or is it across multiple timelines just to make it even more confusing? Well, let's dig in a little bit and see if we can figure it out, okay? Um, so... Uh, X-Zero, the foundation of the X-Men, X-Men Year One. It, what it shows in this issue is that um, Mo Moira has revealed her lives, previous lives to Professor X, and then they do the same to Magneto. Um, so wh wherever this is in this timeline, um, let's see, yeah, here's Magneto sort of absorbing the news. So in this timeline, um, we know for sure that from the foundation of the X-Men, uh, these characters have sort of uh, known about all these potential past lives and, and events in Moira's life. What we don't know, again, is how, how many of them, because we don't really know what timeline we're in, right? So... You know, if we look in here, we can find some different events like, um, you know, when Moira joins Magneto. Clearly, we're not in that timeline. Up here, Moira goes to the X-Men. Uh, down here, Moira meets Xavier. And they recruit Magneto, but that's not until year 43. So what are we looking at here? Could this be the missing timeline of life six? If so, that means that they've only seen the previous five lives and don't have access to any of these following ones. And, and it's still not clear, even from our examination of this timeline, exactly um, which timeline we're even reading in House of X. So it's all getting a little bit more confusing. And just to add to the confusion, now House of X is sort of a pretty straightforward tale, straightforward enough, right? Um, Powers of X jumping back and forth through timelines and into crazy sci-fi concepts. Hickman has provided tons of these extra pages and it sort of provides like, makes your reading experience, I guess, a little beefier. You're paying what? $4.99, five bucks for this thing. So the idea is that besides just reading um, the comic material, you can spend a little extra time digging into some of the extra stuff, some of the sort of sci-fi stuff. And uh, uh, some of it I like more than others. Whereas obviously I really loved the timeline in the last issue. 
in this issue, we seem to be going into this far thousand years in the future, all this stuff about planetary societies and and uh, sort of Cree supreme intelligence type machines uh, pl- on a planetary scale and how those tie in uh, to this race of aliens. I'll be honest, it kind of loses me. Like I, it's completely lost the thread of connection to the X Men. Um, what, what was a little more interesting here was some of the X uh, uh, ten stuff right here in the basically the current year uh, of of the X Men. What kind of what we're reading in uh, House of X right now? They go in a little more into Orcus, the sort of uh, human uh, machine organization that is uh, uh, sort of all X. Aim and Hammer and Shield and even some Hydra members, right? That uh, Hickman says they they Operation Paperclip them in there, which is a reference to when the uh, uh, the uh, Nazi scientists were drafted into the space program after World War II, and you know all basically all of our rockets were built uh, by ex Nazis. Um, so uh, it, in this timeline. Or in this in this time, these guys have gotten together and they've sort of built this uh, uh, mother mold, right? What they call uh, a mother mold. It's a so a master mold was this sort of giant artificial intelligence sentinel thing that created sentinels. This is a mother mold. This creates master molds, right? So this is really like uh, a looming danger on the horizon for the mutants and like an existential threat, and. Um, so, uh, uh, Professor X decides, you know, they need to be stopped. Um, but, uh, Magneto says, you know, this is a suicide mission and like, can it even be done? It's so crazy. You got to go into outer space orbital miss- mission and, uh, Cyclops gets kind of badass here and he's like, does it need doing? Xavier says, yes, then it'll be done. So... Cyclops is a, a pretty tough dude here, and and I guess we're gonna see more of this mission uh, to destroy the Mother Mold um, in the next issue, which comes out tomorrow. So if we go a hundred years in the future now, X two, this is where so Apocalypse leads the mutants. If we look in the timeline, back to the timeline again, we can see that Moira's ninth life. She worked with Apocalypse and sort of Apocalypse, Moira and Apocalypse form the X-Men. Um, begin this Apocalypse War and then this goes far into the future. In fact, we never see where it ends, meaning a hundred years in the future is definitely not out of the question, right? So m- my theory here is that when we're looking at um, X-Men Year 100, I, I think we're looking at uh, Moira's Ninth Life. I may or may not be wrong, uh, right about that, but uh, let me know in the comments what you think. So, um, as we look at 100 years in the future, we see, uh, you know, the um, apocalypse and the mutants, Wolverine's still around, some sort of form of green magnetos around, and these sort of like chimeric mutants exist um, now because uh, uh, apocalypse and uh, enslaved Mr. Sinister and used his breeding programs to create these like multiple mutants that have like multiple sets of um really powerful mutant powers and they're kind of unstable um but he's been using that to sort of win the war um they've gone and stolen a key piece of technology an indexer so they didn't steal the data they need because there's so much data it's impossible to just find what you need in the computer uh, so instead they stole an indexing chip or machine of some sort and they're going to use that to determine how the data is indexed and stored and how to get the information that they need. It's kind of a convoluted explanation, but um, it's not bad. As far as techno babble goes, it actually you know kind of rings true. We get to see some of these other mysterious uh, uh, mutants as well. So like, um, like this guy, he mentions that... Um, You know, his body once belonged to a mutant who could communicate with anything. Uh, I maintain that that he was that uh, though he has long left this existence. 
Um, what does that mean? So could that be Doug Ramsey, Cypher? That's sort of, you know, he used to inhabit Warlock, a sort of techno organic en entity. They interface that way. This is a sort of like p plant looking or really organic looking entity. So perhaps um, he's in his essence or powers of somehow inhabiting another body. Maybe it's another chimeric mutant thing. Hard to say, you know. Um, what we're seeing is weird characters like Zorn. I don't even remember. As the last I remember in Grant Morrison's new X Men, Zorn turned out to be Magneto in disguise. But then they sort of retconned that afterwards and created this actual character Zorn. Be honest, this was during a, the period I, I, where I lost interest, so I, I'm not really sure about them. And then we've got this green Magneto, sort of a Polaris-ish looking Magneto that's really cool looking and neat. Um, and then we've got Wolverine in what's pretty close to his sort of uh, brown outfit, his fa my favorite of the Wolverine outfits for sure. Um, and that's sort of the, the X-Men team at the year 100. Um, and then they start to talk about like how Nimrod was created and where the Nimrod and the, the, the Nimbus artificial intelligence came from. Stuff was interesting, it reads okay, but honestly, it, it's so far removed from what we know in the X-Men. I mean, this stuff sort of looks almost like celestials or something but like these 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 this stuff is 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 a little bit uh obtuse it's a little tough for me to grok I, it's hard for me to really understand exactly what's going on in these and, and maybe that's the point and that um you know the the mystery will unfold as it goes on um but that's about all we get we get a lot of this 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 extra material here took a long time to read Sort of interesting, but it's really very Hickman-like in that he's not, you know, he doesn't just put out one concept there. He puts out sort of concept on top of concept on top of concept on top of concept that's very intertwined and convoluted to the point where it starts to make you a little bit confused. I'm sort of hoping the gambit here is that... Um, is that's the point is that we're gonna like get things just so confused and crazy that there's gonna be some sort of restart the death of moira perhaps will launch us into the 11th life or maybe it's some mystery about the sixth life that we haven't seen yet um i'm not gonna count hickman out so like uh i'm 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 far from uh disappointed by this issue i liked it i like uh house of x a lot more than powers of x uh, but but as it says, you know, these are two series that are to be read as one. So uh, I'm on board for them all. Uh, Hickman has earned that credit so far. Unlike some other event comics I'm reading uh, from other companies right now, there's actually stuff happening in here. Um, interesting, momentous stuff. Really cool character moments. Uh, secrets revealed and continuity uh, being called into question. And that's just the kind of stuff that I love. So... Uh, if you love it, keep watching. And if you love this video, uh, thanks for, for commenting, pressing like, subscribing, and spreading the word about comic book news. It's uh, with your help that we're growing in subscribers. We're almost to the 300 mark. And uh, we'll do some kind of special giveaway at issue 300. And uh, until then, thank you all for watching.